friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Julie and I am the author of the blog CapturingWonderland.com. So today we're working on the wall treatment, which is going to be a interesting process. I've never done it before, but I'm excited to try it. I have a friend that actually did this for her backsplash in her kitchen. We're going to make faux brick using joint compound and painter's tape. I feel like we should recap what we have already done in this process to the entryway. I did a whole video on my plans. And if you didn't see that one, I'm gonna go ahead and link that video up here for you to watch when you're done here. So I replaced all of the trim on the doorways and the floor. That was project number one. I just finished project number two with this beautiful dresser makeover. And if you didn't see that video, I'm gonna link all of them up here for you so you can go and enjoy those videos when you're done here. I will also leave them down below for you as well. <laughs> So I have some painter's tape from Home Depot. This is going to be used. This is the, let's see, what size? 0.94 inches by 60 yards. This is just the regular kind you can find in the store. And I'm gonna use this to go around all of the trim just so that I don't get joint compound all over my trim. I'm also gonna use it to tape off the transition here on the corner because I don't want it going around to this side. So I'm gonna put a line down there, maybe on the ceiling. Haven't decided on that yet. Maybe not, probably not. That's my plan for the first step. The second step, which is going to take me the longest, I have a feeling, out of all of this, is going to be taping off the fake bricks. For that, I chose to get the smallest tape I could find, which is 0.70. And I had to buy this off of Amazon. It's actually pretty cheap though. So I bought myself a wallboard tools joint knife to spread the joint compound. And, oh my gosh, the biggest container I could find of joint compound Ooh, is really big and it's really heavy. So I'm just gonna put that there because I have this wall and this wall. So I had a feeling I was gonna use more than one of those little tubs. So I wasn't even gonna bother with that. I'm gonna link all of the supplies that I use down below for you. You can find them in Home Depot, probably in Lowe's, probably most of your local hardware stores, but I definitely could not find these. They don't carry this small of tape in store. So I had to order those from Amazon. So I'll definitely leave all those links down there for you as well if you wanna tackle a project similar to this. <sighs> okay, let's get started. I actually think I'm gonna start by caulking around all of my trim so that that is completely sealed. I won't have to worry about that process after I make the bricks. So now I need to go find my clock gun. I went online and I looked up the size of the typical brick and standard US brick is eight inches by four inches. And I thought that that was way too big for what I was going for. So then I went on to Home Depot and I looked up some of those faux bricks that are for backsplashes or for, they're basically tiles, so you can use them pretty much anywhere. And the size was like seven and a quarter, I think, or seven and a half by two and three quarters. So that's what I made a little template here for myself. And this is gonna be kind of my gauge. So I'm gonna start at the ceiling and work my way down, making vertical lines and then horizontal lines because I am going to do the brick pattern, which is offsetting. So wish me luck. <laughs> Let's start this process. just did all this work just to realize I was using the wrong size tape. I should have been using this one, which is much thinner than this one. And so now I have to completely undo all my work. Ugh. 
So I guess I will check in with you when I'm done tearing this entire wall apart. I grabbed that tape because I was gonna start taping around stuff and I don't know why my brain just switched to starting on the wall probably because I'm just so excited to get to it. I'm not excited now because now I have to redo everything. Oh my gosh. All right, look how far I am getting done. I'm almost halfway done about. <sighs> now to start at the top and my battery is dying. So perfect time to switch. Woohoo! I'm gonna use the word organic when describing this wall. It was very organic. I just let it kind of come to me <laughs> because these lines are definitely getting sloppier than the other ones. And guess what? I'm okay with it. I really don't honestly think that you'll notice once it's all done. So we shall see. All right, I am ready to start on the next phase of the project. At least, theoretically, I am ready. I seem to have some thing going on here, so my face is all swollen and I sound like poop, but you know, we carry on. All right, so I have my putty knife and I'm not 100% certain if there's like a science to this. I'm just kinda gonna put it on there and try to make it look pretty. I wish that I had some place to like practice, but I don't. Okay, so I have my big ol' putty knife thingy, whatever this is, joint knife, and this thing is so heavy, guys, so heavy. If I can get it open. All right, goodness. I know it's probably like this because they don't want it coming out in transport, but good lord. Okay, are you ready? I don't know if I am. Actually, I am. I just want it to be over with. I want it to be done. <laughs> so, let us see. I don't think you want it like super thick. You probably don't want it all over your fingers either. My goodness. So instead of putting it everywhere, I'm now trying to just get it mainly in the areas where I want the bricks. That way the tape will be easier for me to see, to pull off. And also I think that it'll make them look 
more like separate bricks. We'll see. It's a theory I'm working on here. Kind of show you what I'm doing here up close is to try to give it a raised look on the front and the back. So I just kind of go in where the tape is and then let up, round it off, and then go back where the tape is, round it off. I'm getting towards the end of this wall, super exciting. Um, and then I'm gonna get to pull the tape and that's gonna be so satisfying. But I thought that I would show you like the technique that I have come to believe is the best way to do this. So basically you want to skim coat the wall in entirety to where you can't see the tape. So do a section, just cover it. Make sure to get in to all the little holes here. And then go back in where you know the tape is and scrape and then let up and kind of round it off. Scrape, let up and round it off. Scrape, let up and then round it off. And you don't want to push down too hard because you don't want to take the tape off the wall. So you're really just trying to scrape to find the edges. You want to find the top and the bottom of the tape so that you can round off the top and the bottom because that is what is going to give it that really organic brick look. I, I have a feeling that if I were to just take the tape off that it would be very square and that's not the look that I'm wanting. I'm trying to avoid the square look basically. If you don't mind the square look then I'm sure that it doesn't matter but this is just how I'm personally doing it. So we shall see how this turns out. I'm thinking that it's gonna look pretty convincing for Brit. Now for the very messy process of taking the tape off. So let's see how this goes. I have a trash can right here for all of the mess. comes off where it's going to, I guess. Definitely do not be wearing clothes that you care about in this process. Ah! And I guess I will be doing some work touching up. goodness this is all water soluble so it's okay if you do get it on yourself it'll wash off again this process would have been a lot easier if I'd have had a second person <laughs> uh, I think I could have made less of a mess maybe it's turning out really nicely though maybe I should just give up on the idea of not making a mess of myself and just get it over with. And I'm definitely, once I paint this, I could be fooled that it was brick. Yeah. You tell me what you think in the comments of this entire process. So what comes next? Well, 
I'm not entirely sure. I know that this is going to take a while to, to fully dry. I'm thinking it probably won't be fully dry until tomorrow. So chances are that this is going to be the end of the video for this project. And I will show you the rest of what I do with this wall in the next video. So coming up, once it's dried, I'm going to probably paint it is what's next would be my assumption here. I may go in and do a little bit of detail work on it to try to round off some of these harsher corners, but I may not. I may just leave it. We'll see. You shall see in the next video. So that's basically what's coming up next. Painting this area, painting my daughter's bedroom. And I'm excited for that because paint is really what starts to tie everything together. And all of this is going to get painted. So everything. And then after that, the flooring is going to be next. I'm going to be painting my tile floor here in the entryway. And, and then I'm going to be working on this wardrobe to the side of me here. And then after that, it's basically just little things like installing the new light fixture that I have and the ceiling medallion. I'm really excited to get that up. And then just decor and the final touches, which is amazing. I mean, it's been a lot of work so far, obviously, but it's going by really quickly. So oh, I love smaller spaces. They just give you those wins that you need. And yeah, so I'm really excited. I'm happy with what it, how it turned out. You let me know in the comments what you think so far. And I'm excited to get it all finished so that I can see the final product and show it to you guys. And just reiterate that you don't need a huge budget. Like guys, this cost me less than $50 to do and it made a humongous impact on the wall. It, it made a huge impact for $50. This tub was like $20. The tape was like six. This was like nine, you know, like not a whole lot of money. So you can do amazing projects to bring charm and character to your home and you don't have to spend a bunch. And it's not even that, like if you don't have the money, yeah, sure, if you don't have the money, obviously. But even if you have the money, like there's no reason to go out and spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on projects when you can easily just take a little bit of extra time and get it done in a creative way. Like this process was actually really fun for me. It was kind of cathartic, this, the whole plastering it on there and trying to make it look like brick. Um, I enjoy that kind of stuff so maybe you don't I don't know but the brick tiles that you can buy to put up on the wall are $75 a box and then you also have to you apply them with like mud you have to apply them with mudding and then you have to grout in between them so you're talking hundreds of dollars versus like less than 50 so anyway thanks so much guys for watching all the way through I am so happy that you are here sharing this with me and I can't wait to show you more like the video if you enjoyed this content and subscribe if you want to see some more there's a lot more exciting projects going on in my home and I would love to share them all with you so thanks again guys I will see you in the next one bye